I don't know if you're like me, but I like to do a lot of small paintings. For example, this recent painting I finished with red poppies. Though, at one point I realized I made a mistake while doing it. I did not prepare the canvas in advance. Hello and welcome. My name is Charlembos. I go by Bob and I'm not your typical painter. And today I am going to talk about store-bought canvases and how to improve them as well which doesn't require too much of an effort. But honestly, some time though. And because I do a lot of small paintings, I like to buy pre-made little canvases, such as this 11 by 14 canvas, or this slightly bigger one, which is 12 by 16. I've even done miniature paintings on two by three canvases. Check out my YouTube shorts if you're interested. When I do use a store-bought canvas, such as this one, I always give it an extra coat of gesso for various reasons. One, so the oil does not penetrate through the canvas because honestly, these are very thin and you can see right through them. Two, which was the main reason I had issues, the surface kind of sucks sometimes. So why did I not prepare it this time? Because I did an acrylic underpainting and I thought that was good enough, but I was very wrong. So in today's video, I will show you how to prepare a canvas that you bought from the store and give it a nice coat. Some of the things you will need for this project are a store-bought canvas, some gesso, and a paintbrush. One that is made for acrylic paint or gesso. I like this Liquitex Freestyle because it has a stainless steel ferrule which is actually pretty useful, unless you want it to rust in the future. And lastly, some sandpaper. I like to use 150 because it's not too rough and not too fine, especially between layers of gesso. But for the final coat, I use 320 because I wanted it to be smoother than my typical finish. You could go 400 and higher, but I wanted it to be a little bit rough. And something that is optional, if you don't want just a typical white canvas, some acrylic paint and something like this bowl to mix the acrylic paint with the gesso. If you notice, I did not mention any water. That is because I'm not gonna water down the gesso. The canvas is already prepared. I'm just gonna add more layers to it. And you do not necessarily have to do multiple layers. You could just do one. But in this video, I did four. Anyhow, Let's start preparing the canvas. One thing you will notice is that I am getting gesso directly from the container. It's pure and not diluted with water. But the thing that is not noticeable is that the canvas is clean and free of dust and debris. Unless you do not mind locking in dirt or small dust particles, I recommend the surface is clean first. It is not that hard to add another layer of gesso to a store-bought canvas. Most of the work is already done for you. But depending on the results you're going for, the application of the gesso might require a more gentle touch. That is why you see me very cautiously covering the canvas. I'm not applying too much at once, and each time I apply the gesso, I use my brush to spread it evenly in multiple directions. The goal is to cover the canvas 100%, and a good way to know if you have complete coverage is if you can see the reflection of the light in the paint, especially since the gesso you are applying is wet. Besides the front of the canvas, I am also doing the sides. Think of it this way, if the front of the canvas has a thin layer of gesso, so will the sides. And oil paint does creep over the years to the edges, and if it penetrates through the thin gesso, your painting could rot on the sides. So long story short, get the sides. As soon as you're done applying an even coat of gesso on the front and sides of your canvas, it is time to let it dry. And I definitely do not mean your container of gesso. So make sure if you're painting directly from the tub like I am, ensure that it is properly sealed or next time you go to use it, it'll be dry on the top. Now it is time to let it dry. Depending on how cold or warm it is, it might take some time. But touch the gesso lightly with your finger to see if it's still wet. When it's fully dry, it is time to sand. 
The choice of sandpaper is up to you. I like 150 grit for most scenarios, but something important is not to put too much pressure or you're going to remove too much gesso. The idea is to smooth the surface and eliminate some harsh brush strokes or little bumps and other imperfections. But it is important to note that if you were okay with that coat, you could just proceed to your painting and not even have to sand. But I'm going for somewhat of a more smoother finish. The sanding process will also create lots of dust. So before you move on to either painting or another coat of gesso like me, dust it off a little. Same as before, apply the gesso evenly on the canvas. And like before, make sure you cover it 100%. The sides are not as important this time around, especially if the goal is to get the surface area where the actual painting will be. If the first coat you applied was sufficient, then the canvas is well protected. Therefore, the sides are not necessary to improve anymore. But I'm striving for somewhat perfection, so I got the sides as well. Once the gesso is dry, it is time to sand again. I'm going to speed through this section because I'm pretty sure you do not want to see me sand for another 5 minutes. But like before, do not put too much pressure and lightly go through the surface of the canvas. Once you are done sanding, dust off the canvas and then start applying another coat. I'm not going to bore you with another 5 minutes of painting, so I'm going to speed this section up as well. Again, you do not have to go to this extent, but I wanted a better surface area for my painting that was more on the smoother side. So what is the purpose of gesso? Well, the goal is to protect the canvas because oil will actually seep into the weaves and ruin it in the future. Gesso in the early stages when it's wet soaks into the canvas and weaves through the threads. That is why it's good to add multiple layers from watered down gesso to pure thick gesso for the last few coats. In a way you're creating a barrier and a surface area as well that is bonded to the fabric of the canvas. Plus gesso has a nice grip to it so when you're applying paint to the surface the paint in a way stays on a little bit even when you do lots of sanding and smooth it out. If you're going to do acrylic over the gesso, it's not as important when it comes to coverage and protection, but that's a completely different story with oil. And after watching some videos on gesso on YouTube, I want to clarify something. Paint, whether it's acrylic or oil, does not soak into gesso. The purpose of gesso is to create a surface area to prevent the paint from soaking into the canvas. And at the same time, to provide a grip for the paint. But in the end, paint can't penetrate gesso. I had to say that. Again, after you're finished covering the canvas of gesso, it is time to sand again. Oh, by the way, I did lower the volume on the sanding, but this is how it would have sounded if I did not. That's why I lowered it. After sanding, it is time for one more coat. You could do more than four, but for me, I think four is enough because I'm starting to like how the surface area is looking. I suppose since I know this is the final coat, I'm being more gentle and cautious on how I apply the gesso. Something I am focusing on is uniform brush strokes as well as trying to make them the same direction, which is left to right. I should have probably mentioned this a lot earlier, but be mindful of the edges and sides. When you apply gesso to the very edge, it builds up on the sides. So it's a good idea to use your brush and smooth it out before the paint dries. It won't make your canvas inferior in any ways if you don't. But if you ever have to unravel your painting or fit a frame, it will be more difficult because of the buildup of dry thick paint. Now it is time to sand one last time. 
but this time I'm going to use 320 grit sandpaper. You can go finer such as 400 and beyond but I still want it to have a little texture and roughness so the paint stays on. Too smooth can be a bad thing and it will be a lot more difficult to paint. Knowing full well that this is the final coat of gesso, this will be also the final time I will sand as well. Since I know this will be the last time I will sand, I'm being more gentle and cautious. The whole process does take a while, especially if you plan on doing multiple coats. It would be quite tragic if you ruined a few hours of work in just a couple of seconds of being careless. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. I truly appreciate it. Hopefully you found this video helpful and it will make you think twice before painting directly on a store-bought canvas. I'm really liking the progress I'm making in my new Red Poppies painting, especially compared to the surface area of my previous one. For more of my work, check out my Instagram. Not your typical painter, of course. Anyways, once again, my name is Charlambos. I go by Bob. And I'm not your typical painter. Until next time, stay tuned for the finished painting.